Good morning, everyone. I'm Rosemary DiPaolo, and I have the privilege to be Chancellor of the University of North Carolina, Wilmington. Today, in this room, we have an impressive combination of intellectual ability, public service commitment, and sheer determination. Of course, you realize I'm speaking of the governor. <laughs> but the rest of you are pretty special, too. In fact, our region wouldn't be the same without all of you. Your talent, leadership, and determination not only shape your lives, but enhance the companies and agencies where you work and improve the quality of our community. Thank you for caring so deeply about Southeastern North Carolina and its future. It's fitting that we're here in historic downtown Wilmington for Governor Perdue's presentation on job creation and retention. This is a topic that is near and dear to my heart particularly, because when our students graduate, they of course want to stay in this region forever. And there aren't jobs. And that's why we have the best educated wait staff in the entire country. <laughs> the Port City has been an economic center since North Carolina's earliest days, when naval stores and forest resources were our major exports. Our people, products, and our placement on the Cape Fear Coast make this region an invaluable asset as state leaders formulate strategies for North Carolina's success in the 21st century and beyond. I know you all join me in looking forward to learning more about those strategies from Governor Beverly Eves Purdue, a dedicated public servant who has championed education, job creation, and health care services throughout her distinguished career in government. Her election as our state's first woman governor, pause. <laughs> is the culmination of two decades of service as a state legislator and as lieutenant governor. Governor Purdue enthusiastically supports numerous ideas, programs, and services that directly benefit the Cape Fear region, including the film industry, entrepreneurship, and small business development. She understands that our region, like the entire state, must have diverse sources of economic opportunity to achieve significant success. She advocates environmental stewardship and sustainable use of our natural resources. The governor promotes biotechnology and green business innovation. As the work of the researchers at UNCW has shown, these areas have the potential to transform lives, not to mention create new jobs and unlock new sources of revenue. Governor Purdue excels at encouraging and enhancing partnerships at all level of government. Her work with the U.S. military to preserve and protect its investment in North Carolina and to enhance our state's service to military personnel and their families is absolutely essential to this region's growth in the years to come. Of course, as Chancellor of UNCW, I personally appreciate her unwavering support and commitment to education at all levels. We share a steadfast confidence in the power of education to change lives. Education is opportunity, pure and simple. Education is economic development, is jobs. And the more powerful the education, the better the opportunities. That's why she expects and supports excellence at UNCW and at universities, community colleges, and schools across this great state. Now, please join me in welcoming North Carolina's 73rd Governor, Bev Perdue. Good morning. Good morning. I'm honored to be here with all of you at this power breakfast, the power meeting. I've done it once before. I'm not going to take the time to call out the names of these fabulous leaders here for the administration because each of them will 
speak in, in a minute and introduce themselves to you. We are blessed to have folks who care about traveling the state and reaching out and touching community after community. So thank you for coming this morning. Rosemary, a chancellor, she's doing a fabulous job, y'all. UNCW is so progressive and such a successful university. Thank you for your leadership. We appreciate you. And I think uh, Representative uh, Danny McComas came in. I'm not sure. He and I co-chaired the Port Study Commission <laughs> years ago. As you all know, I represented for several years uh, one of the two ports. And I look forward very quickly to being here aboard this port and then to see we're going to actually fly over the Brunswick proposal today. Uh, and I hope to have a tour there sometime this spring. Sandra Spaulding Hughes is in the audience, I think, as well. So I always say good morning and good afternoon and good evening to the bankers of the people of North Carolina, the General Assembly. And my mayor is here, Bill Sappho. I don't know where you are, but he is doing a great job from Wilmington. And Ron from the Wilmington Business Journal, who organized this breakfast. What a success. And the two presenters, the sponsors, were incredibly good. I've learned my lessons already today, and I could pass your test, maybe. I'm going to run out and buy my own toolbox before the day is over. <laughs> I'm going to say thank you to all these folks and think about retention and rewards. Uh, this time last week, Keith Crisco and I were in Hollywood. We went to tour the film studios and to meet with every major studio in America. We spent two and a half days in the film city and we came away with some very interesting information. I wanted to start that way this morning. We found out that North Carolina's 25% tax, it's a cash incentive credit from last year that many of us worked so hard to pass because many of us understand that in this state, around the Wilmington area, we have the strongest presence of film and motion pictures and television production on the East Coast. I think we are Hollywood East, quite frankly. And it was our intention last summer to make sure that we once again re regained our position as Hollywood East. And instead, after two and a half days, we realized that what we've done still has tremendous issues. Film executive after film executive were very clear and told us that we had to take off the cap. We've got a seven and a half million dollar uh, spend cap and we have a cap on talent. And if you have a movie coming in that is worth more than 35 or 40 million dollars, and many are, they can't come to North Carolina because we are not competitive with, are you ready for this? Louisiana and Georgia. We were told by one studio that in Louisiana now, if you looked in the parking lot of all the films that are being produced, you would see at least half of the car tags in the parking lot belonging to North Carolinians because our trained workforce have followed the film production. And so Secretary Crisco and I are working aggressively this week and next to bring together a group of legislators that we can trust to understand this industry that affects all the state. It's a great magnet for travel and tourism, for recreation, plus what it does in the economy, both for the production costs and the turnover costs. We are going to get those legislators to agree to take a brief trip. I'm not going, but I think the secretary will lead the mission back to Hollywood where they can hear the same things we've heard before the General Assembly starts this summer. It's our intention to be as aggressive as any administration in history on rekindling this critically important economic center not just for Wilmington, it's for the whole state of North Carolina. And as an aside, I refuse to... <laughs> I refuse to lose another money movie to Sonny Perdue. That was an embarrassing day right down here in Wilmington for me. And we're going to fix that, aren't we, Keith? We're going to, with a little help from the legislature. 